Hello, everybody. This is Andre Aguilas de Jardin. That is my cat, Franny. Hi, Franny. How's it going? And we're going to do an Ammon Cat Crocker Pack together. Right, Franny? Okay. Let's get going. Do, do, do. So, first up is Minotaur Sure Shot. It's a 2 3 Minotaur Archer. Uh, it has reach, and for bad fire, <laughs> Bellows Lizard Fire Breathing, it gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Uh, but unlike Bellow Lizard Fire Breathing, you know, a two, three for threes. Okay, you'll play it. It has reach, that's fine. Red doesn't necessarily re need reach cards like this because it has burn, but they get it like this too, and this is a playable. You're Played in your deck, it's a C. C's are pretty, pretty interchangeable with each other. Uh, you'll play it if you need it, and you can get it, but you're definitely not first picking it. All right, <clears throat> next up is Anointer Priest. It's a one, three for two, and whenever another creature token enters the battlefield under your control, if you gain one life, and it has Embalm for three and a colorless, I think all the embalmed creatures are pretty good just because you can get them twice. There's definitely a black, uh, white zombie sub theme. Um, this one's pretty meh as an embalmed creature goes, but I still think it's a C. I think no matter how bad the embalmed creature is, they're a C at minimum just because you get them twice, but still not looking to first pick this. All right, speaking of meh embalmed creatures, we have Ta Crop Skimisher. Uh, it's a Naji Warrior, which means nothing tribally, and it's at two hunt for two, and it has Embalm for three and a blue. And yes, I think all Embalm creatures at the worst are C. And this is definitely a C. By itself, it would be like a C minus a D. You really want to want to play it, but it has Embalm. Embalm's pretty good. All right, Quarry Hauler. It's a four three for four with my one of my favorite creature types, Camel. Yeah, look at that guy. He's buff. And when he enters the battlefield, for each kind of counter on target permanent, put a counter on it, put a counter of that type on it, or remove one from it. So, in terms of what this set, you either add a negative one, negative one counter to an opponent's creatures, or remove one from yours, or bricks. There are bricks. Um, I think it's a C. I think as a 4, 3 for 4, you're going to play it. My cat assistant is gone. She is no longer helping me grade cards. Um, sorry. Uh, it's a C. You'll play it. I don't think the counter thing is that big a deal, but you'll pro there's enough green cards that have counters. You'll probably make use of it. All right. Scarab Feast. Exile three target creature cards from a single graveyard and cycling black. You probably don't want to use this for its ability because they prob they've they usually already played their embalmed creatures. So you're trading a card for kind of nothing. It has cycling and cards with cycling are good regardless. But still, I don't think this is anything special. I think this is like a D. The fact it has cycling makes it a D. Oh, there are definitely some cycling decks that may have this as its 23rd or 24th card, but you're probably not looking to play this. All right. Ooh, I love this guy. Emberhorn Minotaur. He's a 4 3 for 4, so kind of mum uh, with the stats. Uh, but when you may exert him when it attacks, when you do, it gets plus 1, plus 1, and menace until end of turn. Uh, so I really like the exert mechanic. It leads to a lot of interesting choices. I think people exert way more often than they should. From what I've seen at the pre-release, people just exert when they absolutely shouldn't. Um, so this guy, you know, you can talk to them as a 4-3 or, you know, you don't have to exert him that much. He's not like the 2-2 two -two that becomes a 3-3 three -three flyer when you exert. You only have to exert him like twice before they have to block him. And there'll be times where they just have to block him if you attack and don't exert. Uh, this guy's my favorite so far. I think he's C plus, maybe B minus. You're going to be looking to pl look to play this guy in your aggro deck. Yeah, so uh, he's the uh, overall winner so far. 
Next up is those who serve. They are 2-4 for a white and two colorless, and they are zombies, and they have flavor text. And I don't know, I find this is, I think this is a C minus. The zombie decks is kind of an aristocrat style deck where you want to attack and you have just other zombies you want to die to block with. So it's meh, blue, if you're looking for like a blue white flyers deck, blue just has better blockers anyway, but sometimes you'll make it in your deck. All right, Scribe of the Mindful. It's a 2-2 two, two for three, which is pretty lame. And for a mana and tap it, you sacrifice it and return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, the stats are really underrated, and the fact you have to wait a turn to get it back, and it, it is comp, and that's why. But I think it's really underwhelming. I think it's like a D. You don't want to play this. Even if you have great instants or sorcery cards to get back, this is an extremely slow way to get it back and extremely mana ill efficient. And e even if you play it on turn three, you're not even happy with the body. So I think this is a D. I wouldn't look to play this card. All right, Supernatural Stamina. It's one block for an instant until end of turn. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero, oh, and gains when this creature dies. Return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Uh, so it doesn't actually save embalm creatures. Um, the uh, plus two power is really good for combat trick like that. And if you have a creature with an enters the field ability, you'll get it again. Uh, from what I remember, this format doesn't have that many creatures with enter the field triggered abilities. Uh, but it is a one mana combat trick that will save most of your creatures. So C, it's a pretty interchangeable combat trick with any other combat. Or I suppose you can just use it to regenerate a creature, but... It's C, it's pretty interchangeable with any effect like this. All right, Stinging Shot is a green. Put three minus one minus one creatures on target creature with flying, and it has cycling for two. Uh, this one I'm actually going to give a C plus. I think I would main one a lot of the time. Blue has a lot, a lot of flyers, and this is a good way to just make them useless. And, you know... You, you can cycle it for two. So I wouldn't look to run too many of these, but I think it's a C plus. I think you're gonna run one in your green decks and be very happy about running the one. All right, so next we're up to the uncommons, the Flame Blade Adept. It's a one, two menace, and when you cycle or discard a card, it gets plus one, plus O oh until end of turn. And I know red, black, the aggro decks are supposed to have this cycling thing theme, but just I'm still not impressed with this guy. Just as a one-two menace, it's like he just doesn't do enough. I think it's a D. I think you would have to have a very specific red-black aggro deck to put him in, and even then, I don't think he's that good. So D for flame blade adept. Like it's just what it's just nothing. It's just so little of a threat. Even when they do double block it with Menace, it probably only gets to kill one of their creatures. Where with this guy, you're going to get to kill two of their creatures most of the time. All right. Sacred Evacuation. This is four mana for a sorcery. Uh, blue and three colorless. Return up to two target cards with cycling from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, now this, this is like the big boy version of this. Okay, you want to play the Sacred Excavation, you don't want to play Scribe of the Mindful. So it is it is draw two cards for four mana, because all the cards with cycling are in theory cards, and if not, you can mana inefficiently uh, get more cards for them. But still, this goes in a deck when you have lots of cyclers. You're not first picking this and drafting around this. They have a four mana instant that's just straight up draw two cards at common and it cycles for one. And that is way better than this. But when you're in a deck with lots of cyclers, this is gonna be a card you want because it's gonna be draw two cards, which is it's fine. In that deck, it's a C plus, but you're not looking to first pick that or anything. All right, here's a sweet trial of knowledge. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you sift. 
Uh, Sift is a good card. It's draw three, discard one. And when a cartouche enters the battlefield, return it to owner's hand. Uh, I mean, you're happy to play Sift. You'll play it in lots of your decks. And then the cartouche is just gravy. It's draw two cards, but it's draw, you know, because you have to discard. But it's like very good card selection. And if you get to play a cartouche and return it, you are going to be so happy. Um, I'm putting it beside the Emperor Horn Minotaur for what I would first pick because I think they're of equal power level. All right. We have a rare, Glory Bound Initiate. It's a 3 1 for 2, and when you exert it, it gets plus 1, plus 3, and gains lifelink until end of turn. Uh, honestly, I think he's a C. Plus. Uh, the one toughness means he dies to just about everything. There are lots of negative one, negative one counters flowing around. But uh, with the number of untapped trips, tricks, he, he gets pretty good. Um, I mean, I think a lot of the time people are going to exert him when they shouldn't. They should just be attacking for the 3-1 and trading, which is really good. Uh, if they don't have a creature out and you're attacking with it, just do the take the three. Uh, but honestly, I think he's a C plus. I think he's on the same power level as these two cards. And we have an island and an unwavering initiate. So these are the three cards that I would pull out. I think they're of all equal power level. I don't think this pack is particularly exciting. Um, I'm probably going to take Trial of Knowledge because I like dirtling, but I think if you took any one of these three cards out of the pack, you'd be You'd be, that's the correct choice. I wouldn't be happy with this pack, though. This pack seems like a low power level pack for limited. All right, everybody, let me know what you think if I missed anything. This is Andre Agnes Desjardins signing off.